So happily, I am finally done deburring all the holes in the horizontal stabilizer parts. So now it's on to dimpling. Uh, I've got to dimple most of the holes in the skins and uh, most of the holes in the rib flanges. And uh, I'm going to start out on the skins and I'm going to start with the pneumatic squeezer and uh, do all the ones I can get to around the edges and then I'll move on to uh, the C-frame for the ones that are you know, kind of in the center of the panel here. Uh, there are maybe four holes that are so tucked up under the leading edge you know, on these nose ribs here that I may not be able to get to them with the C-frame either. Uh, I was able to get to the, the one hole, one or two holes on the, um, the vertical stabilizer uh, where the nose rib attached with the C-frame. I, I think I just had my wife sort of hold it back and I was able to get up in there. So maybe it'll be the same with this. Uh, I feel like the, the leading edge is maybe a little tighter on the horizontal stabilizer here, so I may not push my luck with that. Uh, in which case, I'll use the little attachment that I have for my uh, rivet puller and uh, use that to pop the, pop the dimples in those holes. So uh, that'll be a tool I've had for a while that I haven't had a chance to use. So anyway, I'm going to get to squeezing, uh, well, or dimpling these holes. All right, so with the three inch yoke, I can, of course, reach all the holes right along the edge of the skins and then about two holes in along each rib line uh, or along the spar. If I switch out for the four inch yoke, I can reach one more hole, which quite frankly just isn't worth it. Uh, so right there, I'm double checking, just making sure before I dimple the holes that are parallel and just inside of uh, the taped off fairing holes there. Uh, just being a little paranoid. And uh, yeah, you know, this is a perfect case for the, um, uh, you know, the little roll around stool and the foot pedal on the squeezer. Uh, it makes, the, makes everything go real, real smoothly and comfortably and quickly. And so just cruising along. Uh, both sides of both skins. Okay, so I've dimpled all the holes in the horizontal stabilizer skins around the perimeter that I can reach with the pneumatic squeezer. So now it's time to dimple the holes in the interior area of the skins uh, with the C-frame. So I made a couple of modifications to my C-frame setup. First of all, I moved it to this table out in the center of the room. I normally use it on the table that's over there against the wall, but uh, with these skins, I needed to be able to get at it from you know, both sides and just wanted more space around it. So I went ahead and, and uh, moved it to this table. Now, in order to do that, I wanted to brace under the table because uh, they tell you it's, it works best if you put it over a table leg, uh, but I didn't want it over a table leg. I wanted it in the center. So I just cut a four by four to the exact length it needed to be that I could cram it up under the table and, you know, make it really solid right under this spot. And, you know, it's, it's just nice and snug and stays put. I didn't even have to, you know, attach it in any way. And that way I can reposition it if I want and take it out of there when I'm done and take it for next time. So another thing I did, so as you can probably tell by my grubby fingerprints there, I've actually already done this side, uh, you know, this, this side of the skin. I did that last night with uh, my wife's help and uh, my platform for the C-frame here as, as designed, um, the C-frame is normally all the way in like this. You can see the notch you know, that part of it, the vertical part goes in, which means that the contact point, there's a hole, you know, right about here on this platform, and that's where the dies, the halves of the die come together to make the dimple. Well, in this arrangement with this skin, where I'm needing to get at it from the back side here, I was, you know, leaning over to hit it. Um, most of the skin was hanging off of that edge of the platform, uh, and my wife was having to support that. So, um, you know, it worked out okay, but it wasn't ideal, and it dawned on me that if I drilled, you know, if I, it'd be nice to have another hole back here. I could slide the whole C-frame back and use it from this side, and uh, so that's what I've done. I, I drilled another hole here, about a, a foot from this edge. I've got the whole C-frame pulled back this way. That means that uh, it's closer to me when I'm, you know, using it, when I'm hitting it, and there's, you know, a lot more platform over on this side to support that side of the skin. So. Uh, that should make it a lot easier. I've actually already done uh, this one rib line here and it worked out great. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of this side of the skin. I'll probably need some, uh, I'll need an assistant to help hold that back out of the way when I get up to this spar and certainly these nose ribs. But other than that, I should be able to do all this, you know, without having to have somebody 
support um, the, uh, you know, the, the rest of the skin. So that'll make it a little easier. So I'm going to get to dimpling. So I have to admit, I still get a little nervous beating on my airplane with a hammer. Um, I may talk more about that in a later video, but this all went without a hitch. Um, to me, the most painstaking part of using the C-frame or any of this, uh, you know, dimpling the insides of the skins here, is repositioning the skin over each hole. And, um, you know, you can see me pick up the skin a, a little bit each time I, I move it along, and that's because the male dimple die is the one protruding from the underside, uh, you know, sticking up from the table. So it has to be that way. That's the direction of the dimple. Uh, and I think it'd be even more difficult to get lined up if it wasn't. But still, you don't want to scrape the skin along the male die uh, and scratch it all up. So you have to sort of lift it up and, you know, search around a little bit. Maybe that'd be an argument for leaving the blue vinyl still, you know, on everywhere but the, the lines of, of screw holes. But to be honest, I'm, you know, following along the line of screw holes with this anyway. So I'd still have to be careful and not scratch it all up. So, so of course, I've got my helper back holding the skins out of the way as I go along the spar and uh, the nose ribs. So, yeah, pretty much anything, the, the front spar and forward. Uh, you know, the skin is the, the other half of the skin is overhanging enough that I'm afraid I'll, you know, hit it or scrape it with the hammer if I don't have her hold it back out of the way. Um, for those nose ribs, you know, there's a couple of rivets uh, or a couple of, yeah, a couple of rivet holes there that are so tucked up in the leading edge uh, that you know, we have to come at it a different way. So I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so we've done all the dimpling on the interior area of the skins and all the way with the C-frame. I've done the perimeter with the squeezer. And now I've just got uh, eight holes, uh, two here, two here, and then two on the other side of, of uh, each nose rib that I couldn't get to with the C-frame uh, because, you know, the, the angle of it, this, the top part just gets in the way and, and I feel uncomfortable bending it back. Probably could have gotten to this one on each on each nose rib. I think I did on the right hand skin on one side of it. But then after I tried out this little tool, it did well enough that I just decided it's easier to do the, the last two each side of each nose rib uh, with this thing. So what this is, this is the tight quarters I think it is um, dimpling die or it's like a blind die maybe. Uh, so there's the two halves that you know form the dimple. Obviously, you want to make sure you get the right side. So let's see, the concave side needs to be on the other side of the skin. And then it comes with several copper mandrels that you, you know, put this on. You feed that through the hole. You feed this on the other end. And then you use a blind rivet squeezer, a pop rivet squeezer, uh, to make the rivet. The instructions have a good bit of disclaimer to them because you know, that uh, you know this is not going to make as nice and crisp a rivet as uh, the C frame or as a regular uh, die in a C frame or squeezer makes. But I so far the ones I've done, uh, which I guess is six or eight of them, I've been perfectly happy with them. I think I can kind of tell that they're maybe not as nice, but they're they're plenty good uh, for me. Uh, it also comes, so the, the copper mandrels that it comes with are for thinner skins, like control surface skins, and then it comes with steel mandrels, also known as a, a big finish nail, finishing nail, um, for thicker skins. And what the instructions actually tell you to do is to start off with the copper mandrel, form the rivet, and then come back and use the steel one after that. I, after a couple of tries, just ended up starting and finishing with the steel one. In fact, if you if you squeeze too hard, it'll break these. I think I even broke a nail um, on one of them. So anyway, we're going to try this. Okay, oh. here you go. Uh, start with this top one here, I guess. Which side of the skin? Oh, this is the top of the skin, isn't it? Did it say top? Let's mm -hmm. actually start. Top. Yeah, let's start on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So that if I mess up, and at least I messed up on the bottom. Okay, uh, right here. All right. So 
that's the right one. I don't remember if there was a trick to this. Anything I learned? I don't think so. I just learned not to use the one and the I, other. I remember I got it stuck. All right, are you pushing? Yes. Uh, okay. All right, what did it say? It said squeeze it until you feel it and then let off, right? And then squeeze it again. All right, I think any more than that, I'll break it. So let's see what we got. Uh, looks like a dimple. Doesn't look as deep as the others, but where's, where's the red? Right this is great, I think it looks terrific. Okay. I think I gave oh, it to you. It's around here somewhere. Yeah, it looks pretty good. We'll never know. Can't find the rivet. Ah, there it is. All right. Well, let's see. Yeah. Wow, it's actually, I swear it's, yeeks, it's deep. Yeah, it is. Okay. So that's fine. I won't go as deep on the next one. All right, pop it out. I want to see what it's like on the other side. I don't think the. Good. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, I won't squeeze as hard next time. Okay, feed it through. Am I pushing on the skin or are you? You. Okay. Perfect. Okay, pop it out. more. Ready? Mm -hmm. One, two. Buckle my shoe. All right, let's do the next one now. I'll check it. too much effort into it before. All right, let's see how these are. Good. Good. I love it. Should do them all this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I finished dimpling uh, all the holes in the skins, uh, all the stuff I needed the C-frame for. And it's a beautiful, blustery October day today, so I decided to move the rest of uh, the stuff out here onto the patio. Strung a couple of air hoses together and got, a, got it far enough out here to use the squeezer. And now I'm going to go ahead and dimple the rib flanges for the horizontal stabilizer uh, out here on the patio. So I got set up on my picked from the trash uh, table that I've got out here. I've got my substructure dies and I got my noisy neighbors getting good and drunk over there by their pool and uh, that's pretty much all I need so I'm gonna go ahead and start dimpling and enjoy the weather. So I think I mentioned the substructure dies in an earlier video. From everything I've read you don't really need uh, those dies. You can use the same dies on the substructure that you use on the skin. 
the substructure dies are at a slightly different angle. They make a dimple that's better angled to accept another dimple as opposed to the head of a flush rivet. But the real reason I like them is because the female half of the die, the female side of the die, is a smaller diameter and it makes it, uh, it doesn't interfere with the web of a rib uh, when you're dimpling the flange. So uh, that's why I prefer to use them. But that's about it. I'm going to end this one here. Uh, that wraps up all the dimpling and uh, thanks for watching.